Hello there and good evening my local drone. It is I, Bio Gundam, back again for another video. So today I've got my t two buddies of mine and we're gonna be doing uh we're gonna be doing a podcast about the Tatami Galaxy. And my two guests introduce themselves. Hello. Uh. <laughs> it is I, Memlol. I like Tatami Galaxy a lot. <laughs> yes, um he, he Hello. is also he is also um Danish. So Dane's Law raiding and pillaging. Hello, it is I. Tanner, uh, I like Tatami Galaxy a lot. Yes, and apparently he is a skilled martial artist whose love to Tatami Galaxy is I only equaled by his love of the sword and bathing it in the blood of his enemies. <laughs> yeah, yeah, when, we know. When they were Tanner, studying you, the ways to ruin love, you've I been a fan of Tatami Galaxy for a long, long time. As in, like, yeah, for for a large majority of my life, I think I've probably been a fan since like I finished the entire show about an hour ago. Wow. Um, yeah, it's... Right. So um, <laughs> but, so yeah, we, we this is already gonna be a good podcast. Yeah. So before we sort of dis um, get into Tatami Galaxy, um, should we discuss sort of the expectations that people had before we before everyone watched Tatami Galaxy? Because this show has quite a bit of hype around it in a few circles. Um. Like for example, when I was told about it, I was told I was told that you have to watch it at a specific time in your life, otherwise you will not understand or get its themes. I've watched it three times. Uh, third time's a charm. I actually finally understood the show and had to give it a higher score than I what I originally gave it because when I originally watched it, I was like, "This is good," but I still don't get it. Third try, I'm like, "Ah, oh, I finally get it." Yeah, like it gets better every time you watch it. It's amazing. Oh yeah, it is a pretty yeah, good comedy scene. Yeah, I've currently scene. only watched it once, but um, I really, yeah. really liked the message and the theming. And right. um, I, I am not mm. trying to flex or say anything that I'm special, but I kind of understood what was going on from um, from episode. I, I started to suspect it in episode one, but in episode two, it kind of confirmed it for me. All right, the, okay. the main character mm. was constantly ruining his own chances and stuff. Yeah, uh, we'll we'll get into that later. Yeah. So anyway, so Tatami Galaxy is basically about we're gonna call him main character A, who's like you know he wants a rose colored university life, but um that's not exactly what happens because you know all those people who oh they don't appreciate his talents or his evil friend Ozu oh they always sabotage and destroy his talents. But um as we get further in this podcast, I think we're gonna discover that the only one sabotaging is literally himself. And um yeah. And uh, and this is why I think me and Memlo will agree with the fact that this is a tale about master and slave morality. As he as enduring most of the entire show, he is embracing slave morality, which is why he continues to find himself in this eternal rut. But uh, that's uh, neither here or there. So, um, what do you guys think about the story, how it played out, and the time skips and stuff? Let's let's talk about that first. Oh, oh yeah, I mean, like I fucking loved it. Like I, the the story of me watching it was actually just I was bored as fuck one day. <laughs> decided yeah sure i'll i'll like i was just scrolling through my folder of a uh, very legal uh torrents and found a uh, tatami galaxy because i hadn't seen it at that point and heard it was good and i thought like yeah sure it'll probably be decent and then i watched the entire thing in like two sittings <laughs> in that one day yeah i like, like I, I i i think what like, really helps with its reputation is this show is like the ultimate normie filter like yeah. the art style <laughs> the sub the speaking like this is the ultimate normie filter of anime like would, yeah, you, both, would you both agree <laughs> it really is you get but, um, like it's like, so I, it's such the, a strong first speaking, impression yeah, you get the, like the first caught off guard the first episode is great it's uh yeah. it's so fast there's quite a few jokes like thrown in there right at the beginning such as the one with the uh, love god's name um Oh, yeah. And like it's it's super fast, even to where I was having trouble reading the subtitles. But the best part about it is mm. it's only like a normie filter for like the first few minutes of each episode. Whenever there's like some sort of exposition exposition no. uh, that's kind of heavy, they get it over real quick. And only ever occasionally mm. at other times is it so fast that I can't read it and have to like go back five seconds. Yeah, like um, I I think that's one of the interesting aspects about this show is this show is not for the general normal audience, and because it's not for the general normal anime watching audience, it can practically do whatever the fuck at once like having a really unique art style and also the the talking like if you if you had trouble understanding japanese like if you're not a native speaker they they, they speak a fucking mole a minute in the show as well it's like uh <laughs> yeah and, uh, I, I, yeah like, like, the um, simple speed of the first episode and and them talking is insane like there is so much information yeah. that's given and so many jokes yeah. that are thrown out it's amazing yeah. so um, um uh, i was like uh, should, should, should we talk about like the movie club segment which is i think is the first segment of the series the the movie club uh no that's the um tennis uh court thing it's oh, um sorry, the my, yeah i've got the, the yeah i've got the yeah. episode count up right now um so what do you guys <laughs> think about the the tennis 
segment because we're, we're gonna we're just gonna talk about the segments one at a time, like a bit at one at a time, and then go about characters and etc. or whatever. So, um, who wants to go first for the tennis segment? Oh yeah, like I I love it. I think I think it's a great introduction to the show. Like y- you know, you get introduced to like um this guy's life, Osu and um Akashi in one episode. So how like much they hate that circle, so they just decide to ruin every other other person's love. It's it it's, it's amazing. Great. <laughs> Uh, what I really like about yeah. that, like what I really like about that episode, is it kind of shows you everything you need to know about the characters, about you know main yeah. character Kun, Ozu, Aki, all these people. Like it really tells you everything you need to know, and the the rest of the episode mm. is just kind of like enforce this theme that we're going to. We're, we're, it, it harkens back to this theme, which we are going to go into. Um, Tanner, what was your thoughts mm. on the um the tennis episode? Do you think it was a good like entry point for the series? Do you think it introduced uh, everything needed to be said? Oh yeah, the first episode had a great introduction. Um, it had. It has obviously like the description of um, uh, the best friend right at the beginning, whenever he first meets him. As well as there's the uh, there's the entire expectation set up of our main character and how he like joins the tennis club because he wants to find some sort of romance through the club and everything like that and make as he puts in himself a hundred friends. And so it sets up really quickly uh, all of the it sets up really really quickly all the groundwork for um, our characters' motivations and how who they turn out to be and why they want to ruin love for other people. It's a uh, it's really really solid. Solid. Um, yeah, and it, it is great how the main character is so fucking petty. <laughs> it's great. Like this guy. Like I was, yeah. I was watching few episodes. Like this guy is kind of a fucking asshole, and it's great. Like in, yeah, the, in the first episode, I thought they were gonna take like the incel route and have him be like a complete incel. I hold that for <laughs> because there is one episode I want to talk about in particular. But anyway, um, yeah. So the, the first episode really sets up the tone of what you know what our character is gonna be, and I really like it for that. Now the second episode is probably one of the best episodes comedy wise <laughs> oh yeah <laughs> for, for a it's great reason great oh, episode's uh, pretty, really funny yeah so the second episode <laughs> we get introduced to the the film club and we have this guy who's like um i would describe him as a bit of a chad like character would you all agree <laughs> yeah <laughs> chad. joker saki Definitely. is amazing <laughs> <laughs> yeah and um basically you know main character and ozu oh they fucking hate this chad you know misusing his talents let's just fuck him over and so they do some uh recordings of videos and um you know they play a little home movie and um we we, we find out that the the giga chad here um has like a literal love doll yeah. a virgin love doll might we add I, I, yes and like there's a clip of him patting it it's like oh cory you're so lovely today you're so beautiful i'm like oh my god he has a literal doll holy fuck there's and that like he's a, a big fan his, of titties uh, yeah there's his climbing wall of breasts which was amazing which makes a return in later episodes i love the callback or, or uh, the boob measurement chart like <laughs> dude this dude oh, does I forgot research about that one, yeah yeah th- this dude does yeah, his fucking like, research it's amazing i i find it extremely it's a bit unbelievable though that he was able to get away with that like because there's there's yeah. the actual scene where he has like the girls like actually go behind that board and just show their tits <laughs> and i'm like i never would happen in real life but it's really funny yeah well, well the funny thing is is that like he's such like <laughs> he's this such kind of Chad. yeah like that's the thing <laughs> Like, he, he is such this, like, Chad-like character that you would never suspect. And then, like, you find out there has, like, a doll that he takes care of and shit, and he has all this shit behind the scenes. It's just fucking wild. Like, uh, when I watched the episode for the third time, I was just cracking the fuck up laughing. Oh, yeah, it's, it's amazing. Episode 2 is really funny. There's, there's this scene at the end of episode 2 where the main character and his best friend make out. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, that was funny. <laughs> yeah. Also, um, the movie's mentioned uh, because, you know, like, um, Watashi, I'm gonna call him Watashi, just because. Yeah, the main <laughs> but, character. And um, Ozu, like, they made, they made um, quote-unquote, idiotic movies that only Akashi liked, <laughs> right? But, like, yeah. all those <laughs> movies mentioned uh, foreshadow later events in the show. Yeah, that's one, of the, that's one of the things I like about this show is it actually kind of foreshadows shit as well. Yeah, like, um, like one the of fo- the movies is um, one guy uh, trying to choose between three women, which is uh, the plot of, like, episodes six, mm-hmm. seven, and eight. Mm-hmm. Yep. Then, like, directly foreshadows uh, the Tatami Galaxy itself. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and, yeah. Uh, and also oh, that, the, the, um, the fortune well, teller. I, I, I also want to talk about, like, the fortune teller. Because every time it goes to oh, the yeah. fortune teller, the price goes up, no. and she says, "You yeah, have great this, potential, this, but you keep fucking up." There's, yeah. there's something, there's something amazing about her. Um, like it's, it's something that's throughout the entire show that I realized. Like on my, I think it was like after having read the book a second time that I realized it. <laughs> because like I've, I've watched the show five times and uh, read the book twice. 
So, yeah, I know my shit. Yeah. But, um, uh, it's heavily, like, of course, it's heavily implied that, um, uh, she's, like, the one that is behind the uh, Tatami Galaxy thing, both in the book and the anime. Oh, really? So, um, yeah, yeah, uh, he mentioned it directly. And in episode 11, I think I have the time code somewhere. I just gotta find it real quick. There's, like, a shot of her up. Okay, yeah, I found it. Uh, I just gotta. Okay, doesn't really matter. The quality yeah, like, of the like, screenshot. Yeah, it's fine. Just give us a screenshot. I'll post on screen. But um, we'll we'll we'll, we'll just talk about like the the best. Yeah, um, this is this is a like this is a flash frame in a in the final episode. Okay, I'll put this on screen. Like, um, oh oh wait, no, it's the wrong one. It's it. There's also um oh fuck like there's one in t- on top of the clock tower that um like symbolizes the uh going back in time, right? Mm-hmm. Okay. Also, uh, he mentions it directly in like in the Tatami Galaxy that it might be her. But here's the thing: she made fuck tons of money off of him. Like, yeah, if th- we this just is... did. Yeah. <laughs> the price keeps so, on like, going if, up. By if the you way. combine all the all the cha- like payments she got, that's forty five thousand yen. But <laughs> because of the Tatami Galaxy um, and the fact that uh, Watashi finds like um, a wallet. <laughs> Uh, in each of those, where he gets a thousand yen each, he also gets rich as fuck. So they literally just yeah. make each other money. <laughs> that's that's where that's where he found the um he he left the backpack in one of the rooms, and that's why he found it in the uh, in the episode where they were searching where he needed to buy the scrubber. Yeah, yeah, it, <laughs> which which I thought really was cool. great. Yeah, Everything like um, really like it is um, is it's, um, it's amazing. Yeah, um, it's, it's so um, yeah, so I think we'll just talk about one more episode or two. So before we start going in the show general, so what did you guys think about the third episode, the fucking bike episode? There it was. I was oh oh yeah, the bike episode is um. It's pretty good. Like, I don't... I think it's probably one of the weaker ones. Yeah, Here's like... an I, interesting thing. Yeah, it's, like, honestly, the, um... It's... Like, the... It's the, the only episode that uh, is not in the book at all. Yeah. Like, um... Episode 5 yeah, is mostly it. original, but the club is, he joins is in the book. Got it. There's nothing yeah, from episode that, 3 in the book. I'd say that the bike and, episode um, is the I mean, it's still a really good wise. episode. It's just... Wait, um, Tanner wants to say something? Yeah, I was gonna oh, say, sure. I think the third one is still the weakest... Is the weakest one plot-wise... Because nothing really ties back into it, if I remember. Yeah, correctly. like um, for me, as well as um, it doesn't tie into anything in the future. Yeah. But I think the strength of the third episode is simply like the romance that develops between uh, the main character and uh, Akashi. Yeah. Because there's like a lot of romantic scenes and a lot of interaction between yeah. them, and I um, really, really liked that episode. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. My my issue with number three is like I like my, I think the strength of number three is that basically it's like if you haven't gotten the hint yet, um, here's the final one like before because if you like if you're not paying attention then you're completely lost at that point but um as tanner said like this and there's a lot of good opening scenes so um now since we saw i I have one other thing to say about episode three yeah go ahead okay um i really like how in episode three it shows us another facet of watashi the main character's um character said character twice in the same sentence it's not good (laughs) but um it shows us another facet of his character because whenever akashi whenever he believes that akashi is, is requiring him for something he goes out and he literally like completely changed his lifestyle by asking uh Joga how do I pronounce his name? Masaki jo- Jogasaki. Jogasaki, yeah. He even goes out and find seeks out Jogasaki so that he can help him work out and get into shape so that he can better do what he thinks Akashi wants him to do. Mm. Um, it shows that he it, even in the beginning it shows a really strong connection at, and even before episode eleven where he states that he fell head over heels for her, it shows that he has a very deep uh, love and connection to her because he's willing to change himself and what he's been doing for years completely just to try and uh, help her out with the project. Yeah. So I, I really like episode three for how how well how good of a relationship it builds between Watashi and, and Akashi. Yeah. It, yeah, it definitely helps set the the formation for everything else to come. So um, now since we've given people like a bit of an introduction to the 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 three first episodes just to give people an idea, um, I think we should probably move on to general discussion. So um, the the story overall and just some hi- and just general discussion and just like highlights um highlight um highlighted scenes that we like in particular. So um, uh, who wants to start our off? Like uh, na- um, name a couple of scenes I think you guys really enjoy before we go into like themes and shit oh i mean i mean my my thought of like 
a scene that I really like is because of the themes like being kind of like um explained. I don't know if I'd say explained, but um Oh well, actually let's like, not blue ball the audience. Uh what what is the theme to Tell Me Galaxy? <laughs> um uh the idea of um like how the main character always thinks like um he, like uh, it's not perfect and uh, like he needs to improve himself uh, or more like um oh fuck how do I explain so, it? So let me I, th- I think I know what you're talking about. So yeah. Through about throughout like episode one through I think it's like ten maybe nine. Uh, the main character constantly blames Ozu as well as others people for his failure. He always says, yeah. "Oh, if I could have gone back in time and I could have um, what's the word? If I could have gone back in time and just chose a different path from the beginning, none of this would have happened. I would have never met Ozu. I would never yeah. would have gotten into this situation." Yeah, he keeps on so making the same mistakes because um, I, I think we I think because he's I'm... the same person. No matter yeah. even if yeah. he goes back, he's still the same person yes. whenever he starts that journey, mm-hmm. which leads him back to the exact same place at the end what, what i think because um so a, a running theme you're going to see throughout all the rest of the episodes is that the main character you know you know he's trying to pursue this path but it never works out and i think one of the themes of time galaxy is like accept what you have and by me and accept what you have oh, is like, like basically he actually had something like in episode four he actually had something but it was never enough for him like he's always wanting more and always wanting more that is beyond um his ability because like um and in- and basically he's like a slave he is like a slave to his own um views of like perfection like he, he he's too blind to see yeah. how good he has it mm, exactly in the words of um higuchi in episode nine this was like the uh the uh scene i uh, was talking about um the one where like um uh I- Watashi is talking about how like um he has it so well but it feels like there's something missing well like higuchi explained there's no such thing as a, a rose colored life it's all just a bunch of colors mixed together. Yeah, and I really like, like what basically really saying like, like the, you um... cannot, you have really unrealistic goals, and you need to uh, search um search like joy in what you have already. Yeah, because and I really like... like the episode that it comes along with, like because the story before mm-hmm. is him basically having a successful life and be actually finally making something for himself because mm-hmm. he becomes the uh, the leader of the bike stealing gang and everything. Yeah, and he's like yeah. doing a great job. He's raising a bunch of funds. But like that's not that isn't what's going to fulfill the whole. That's yeah, in he his feels heart. empty, and 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 this is where I think we get into the the slave and master um dynamic. Is that really like he's not making he, like he thinks that he's in control of the situation, but he never truly is. Like he's always getting manipulated, or like he's the pawn of some scheme or some scheme of some scheme or some scheme. Like literally, the guy is literally being taken <laughs> for a ride nine times out of ten, and like he, and he's yeah, never really self aware of his own actions either, which is what makes him a slave. He hasn't. He's not really conscious. Yeah, so like he, 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 he has no like introspection or no self. Really, he has no self awareness. Like really, he's almost like your typical like millennial or like SJW. Like they they blaze through life yeah. and they're like, and then when they like, reach their adult years, like man, why do I feel so empty? <laughs> like that's almost like I don't want to get too political, but it's almost like what it feels like. Like, he's like one of these Tumblr users that, like, at age 40, like, oh my god, what have I done with my life? The Tommy Galaxy is just a Tumblr allegory. That's all it ever was. Yeah, yeah, it's a, yeah, it's a, it's a master and slave morality allegory mixed in with Tumblr. But, um... Like, I mean, I mean, I think I think you can relate that, that message back to pretty much anything, which is probably the point. Like, I mean, I mean, it's probably why the main character doesn't have a name. It's because, like, literally anybody could be in that place. Yeah, the main character is you. He's the ultimate yeah. self-insert trying to tell you, hey, have some introspection, <laughs> dumbass. Yeah. A- appreciate <laughs> have, what have you have. Have some introspection and find a meaningful relationship. Don't blame your problems on others. Yeah. Try and take everything you can yeah. into your own hands. Yeah, because, because if you look at some of the episodes, like, if you look at some of the episodes, like, um, like, you know, he has these very genuine bonds with people, but he, he, he throws them away. Like, you know, he throws them away because it's not perfect. And it, and it, and it basically takes them, like... He's scared to act on, yeah. Or, or he's too scared to act about it. And it, it takes him about, like, it takes until literally the Tatami galaxy itself trying to enslave him to him to realize, like, wait a minute, I had everything I ever wanted and I was just too blind to see it. And I, I really think that is a really powerful message. And I like it how, it, like, it becomes so obvious after a couple of episodes that that's the message of the show. Like, I appreciate yeah, like, what you I, the have. Show, it's really simple. It's a really simple message, but it's it's executed really, really well. Which yeah, is, think, like, you, you know, when you look the at other. the art style, you think, like, oh, this is going to be a super deep show. Like, no, not really. 
it just has a very simple message and a great way of executing um executing it oh like um i mean uh, okay i'm probably gonna get into this more later on but like um there's some pretty interesting like changes from anime to a uh, book or like from book to anime uh talk about it um, i think that'd be interesting okay um so basically the main difference is like the book has four chapters which are all like one cycle um, which are then split into different cycles for the anime because you know the anime has like eleven, I want to say eleven episodes. But um, yeah. here's an interesting thing: um, at the end of every single uh, chapter, like every single chapter ends in the same way, pretty much, except for the final one. Like he gets with Akashi in all of them, but uh, he still feels like shit at the end because like it it wasn't the fact that he got with Akashi at the end of the show that uh, made that like actually changed him. It was, like, everything going on around him. It just happened so with his new mindset, he could get, get along with Akashi. And you're talking with the uh, with the book specifically, right? Um, uh, uh, I, I think this could account for... Um, I think this could I, count I think, for... Uh, I think that it would apply to the, to the, the anime, anime as well. well. But um, the thing is, he never really ends up with Akashi romantically in the anime before mm. time resets. Yeah. So um, I think, I think yeah, go, go on. Yeah, basically, like, um, it wasn't... What I'm trying to say is, like, it's not the fact that he's with Akashi at the end of episode 11 that makes him happy. It was more like his own um, uh, viewpoint. Like, even if Akashi turned him down at the end, I think he would, uh, you know, be a way happier person and wouldn't want to repeat everything because of what he learned in uh, in the Tatami Galaxy. Yeah, like, because, you know, even if she turns him down, you know, he's got Ozu, you know, he's got these people in his life yeah. now, like, he's gonna be fine. Yeah, yeah, like, um, of course, it just happens to work out for him, that, um, Akashi also likes him. Yeah. And, I mean, that's, um, that's something that's, uh, like, shown pretty early in the show. Like, um... Yeah. <laughs> like, like, basically, uh, I, I think two. it's interesting that, that she actually likes him, but he's too, literally, yeah. if, you know, I, I hate repeating myself, but he's too blind to actually see it. Yeah, <laughs> like, um... She was literally the only person who liked the movies they made, like him and Osu. Yeah, and then and then whenever he they did the the hit snuff or snuff films, not right. Whenever they did the hit piece on a uh, yeah. uh, Jogosaki, that was the one that she didn't like, and she said, "I think it showed poor character." Yeah. Which, uh, for me, whenever I heard that line, it kind of kind of hurt my heart a bit. <laughs> Why did bad. you make a hit yeah. film on someone, Tana? No, I never have, but I still felt bad because I empathized with the main character. <laughs> Ah, oh, yes, empathy there. Yeah, I love yes. when she comes more than she's just like, well, you made another idiotic movie. <laughs> yeah. I love, I love her dialogue. Akashi might be... Yeah, she's favorite. great. She's amazing. Yeah, I love it. She basically just says it out as, like, um... Now, um, should we actually talk she about, take... like, yeah, should we, uh... I was just going to say, she didn't take any of jo Jogosaki's crap. <laughs> no, she, she didn't. Did. It was it. great. Like, I love it, because, like, Jogosaki's, like, this mega chad, and she's just having none of it. She's, like, don't care. So, you know, whenever he shows up, like, the, the Giga Chad music plays in the background, and she just looks at him, and the, he, you hear the Giga Chad movie just slowly dying down. <laughs> yeah. yeah, deflating. Yeah, deflating. The second she stares at him, it's great. Um, <laughs> one of my favorite episodes, I think it was either episode 8 or 9, where he's like looking after the doll and he basically like i think it's the episode with the three chicks and like he literally becomes yeah, like a fucking no, big like towel three episodes of them. yeah like he literally becomes a big towel in every episode it's fucking great like <laughs> he's got like this a true like... incel <laughs> yeah that's like the ultimate incel episode <laughs> like literally he's like, got like a doll book, and a like, mansion he's like oh i'm so burdened with women but i do not care like dude i'm just like, like it's Gundam. Oh, I was about to say, like, it's like, I was like, is this like the MGTOW episode or the Incel episode? Like, it's just so funny. Like, I was cracking up laughing during that scene. But, uh, <laughs> all right, uh, continue. The scene, the scene was like really, really funny, and I really, really enjoyed it on that level as well. But, oh, um, I, I, I just I love the kind of super... arrogance that he displays as well. It's so funny. Like, the fake confidence. Oh, everything is so great, but I'm so lonely. <laughs> yeah. So lonely. Um, one of the, one of the other things that I found really interesting about that episode. Is that like you know he we we're saying that he goes to like full incel and everything, but like he doesn't actually. We don't mean incel as in like he hates women. Just it's that like he wants to get with this doll and he gives up his chance with a real actual woman to go and be with this doll. But um, the thing about the episode is it it gave me a really new perspective on like the um what did they call it? I think they called it an Irish doll or something like that, or love a doll, Swedish like, wife or something like that. 
Uh, a bit, bit, uh, what a bit, I think it's like maybe the real doll. Like, have you guys heard of like Phil from the dog, um, the dollhouse who sells like real dolls? I think mm. so. Yeah, I, um, I know that they're like real dolls. Yeah, yeah real they're, dolls. They're, they're um, so... yeah, like um, yeah, um, Phil from the dollhouse is talked about by uh, Turd Fleeing Monkey, uh, Drexel, and some people in the MGTOW community. Actually, um, I've actually seen a live stream with him, with Phil from the dollhouse. Um, he's actually not what I expected him to be. Like, um, just off topic, like the guy is very well fucking spoken. Um. Mm-hmm. definitely not what i expected so um like it, it, um is it similar to like like what phil does like dollhouse phil does yeah the one thing that i want to say about the episode is it's like really it's weird to say but it's very understanding of the uh of the kind of people who do that and it kind of paints it in a really um it kind of shows the glory side of it how there is like an actual bond and relationship that was formed between him and the doll even if it was completely one way and superficial and all just in his head. It was very. I found it surprising that it was so understanding, and it didn't really. Yeah, like, like I, 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 I've actually seen um, videos that talk about this. Like some people just have dolls, not because they can fuck them, but because just like a companion. Like they don't care if it doesn't mm. talk back. Like as long as they have feelings for it and they care for it, that's all that really matters. You know, it's, yeah, it's which like is a, exactly it's like, what the doll was to both the guys. Yeah, and, I, and I, you know, it's yeah. like a samurai and a sword, right? You know, almost in, in, in yeah, a way. It's a. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's a how, companion like, to it, you and it, and it speaks to you in some ways yeah how in like episode two um because watashi realizes he has an opportunity with like exposing him but then in episode eight he ends up going down sorry episode seven he ends yeah. up going down the exact same path <laughs> of what I know. Which I think That's is ironically like, funny. Like basically, he's doll. like, yeah, he's trying to protect the doll. Like, um, who's that scummy guy with like the buck teeth? Who's like, who used to be the leader of that? Who was the leader of that shadow organization? Oh, I don't remember his name. Let me check. Oh, like, I don't word. remember his name, but uh, yeah, but the, the yeah, really like... slimy guy. Like, he was trying to like kidnap her and like, oh no, Kurdi son, Kurdi son, note hurt her. <laughs> Uh, like, like so as, you, as much as I don't I, like I, the real I, doll I, shit, I must admit I, I found that incredibly wholesome. Also, the doll is actually really cute. Yeah, yeah, the doll isn't like bad looking. It's not even like in uncanny valley territory. Yeah. But, One uh, thing that's really great about the art style. It, oh yeah, Ijima. But um, like it's one thing that's really great about the art style. It can make her like look real, but not in a creepy way. <laughs> like she still looks slightly odd compared to every other character, but because the uh, art style. Like, because the way the art style is, um, you can't, like, it, it strikes a really good balance with, like, looking like other characters, but also looking a uh, doll, like. Yeah, yeah, that's what I kind of like about it, because sometimes I forget that she's not actually a character, but then, like, the people <laughs> in the show give her a character. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, because it's, it's really cool, because um, one of the things that I like about what they do with her is they draw her, um, it's like everybody else's face is, like, really flat and not necessarily featureless, but it's not terribly detailed just because that's the animation style. But for the doll specifically, especially in the scenes where she's talking back in air quotes to the main character they add like a lot of blush to her face and like a lot of um a lot more detail than anybody else has which makes her seem more realistic uh whenever uh mm. she's talking to the main character and things like that yeah i i, I actually really like the doll seem a bit more normal yeah she was great yeah. <laughs> the doll oh, is a great inclusion <laughs> Yeah, also, speaking of, like, great characters, can we just talk about, like, the dentist? And the dentist, like, holy shit. Oh, yeah. Like, why can't I date this? Uh, Hanuki's hard, really hard. good. <laughs> Dude, she, she, drink, uh, she, she, think she her, drinks... I think her English is so good. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I, uh, I loved the scenes with Woody and her. <laughs> oh, amazing. God. Oh, yeah. I, I honestly Johnny want to talk about it. It's amazing. I, I, yeah, Johnny, I've never seen... I've never seen such a heartfelt scene between a man and his penis. It made me tear up just a little bit, you know, when the penis understood exactly what his, his master's desires were. It was like, yeah, man, I understand. I'll do what I have to do. Operation Bust <laughs> and so Nut. It was the exact opposite, though. It was so good. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah, should we talk about, like, like, the, the like... love god? Um, Actually, should we talk about, like, the actual Tatami galaxy? Like, where um, sure. the main character's slave morality finally breaks? So, um, basically, I think it's episode 10 or 11. Um, the main character gets, gets trapped in a never-ending tatami. Like, he's just going from tatami room from tatami room, and all the rooms are different. So, for uh, let, me, let me give a quick thing for viewers at home. Right. So, a tatami mat uh, in size, I'm about, like... So, this, this room is, what is it, four and a half tatami mats uh, just arranged yeah. in a square. Um, whenever you have one tatami mat's uh, long length, is about six feet i want to say so he's got like a nine ish nine uh we'll say like ten and a half feet by ten and a half feet square or about like 3.2 something meters uh 
of square of square feet space and uh that's what he's trapped in for like multiple is it months i want to say i i i, I think way, it's like i think time. it's like i think years like i think he loses track of time because he's like i can't eat i can't sleep i don't drink i don't have to like it's almost like he's trapped in the digital world of digimon because like in the show <laughs> they realize they don't need to eat and drink it's only because they believe they yeah. didn't drink like if if you if, if you got if if any of you guys have seen the episode of Tamers where they're like underwater and they realize, like, wait a minute, I don't need to breathe. It's I, I, I breathe because I think I have to breathe, and they suddenly get the ability to breathe underwater. Like I think it's like that. Like, mm-hmm. basically, <laughs> basically, he exists just because he exists, and basically, yeah. he's like going through all these rooms and seeing all these interesting things. And I think he even meets a um, doesn't he meet himself? Yeah, oh yeah, that one was the one that, that that's was also foreshadowed, foreshadowed in, in episode, episode five. Yeah, when like is it episode five or four? I don't remember. Episode five. It's it's so good. Mm-hmm. Like he but, directly um, like realizes, oh, I shouldn't, uh, I shouldn't uh, like try to break into that point because um, it would uh, fuck with the, the space time continuum. Yeah, as well as um, uh, either way, however long it is that he's in there, it might, it probably is like easily more than a year because it's long enough for a uh, a Japanese uh, man to grow a full luscious beard. Uh, the <laughs> by, by the way, can I just say that his days. beard was pretty good? I liked his beard. It was pretty good. The his book says nice. it's about 80 days, but I mean, like, that could be changed for the... Um... In the in the anime yeah not not really i, I, we'll I, I, go, I think we'll it's a, like uh, if he's like um japanese people aren't generally that hairy so i'd assume that maybe um has, has to be he's a mega days. chat in disguise yeah i mean the final chapter of the book is called around the tatami galaxy in 80 days also okay. just <laughs> I, yeah but I 80 days to grow a thick beard like that like yeah. jesus that's like <laughs> scandinavian territory yeah. right there <laughs> yes <laughs> it's a good beard it's a good beard. Yeah, he should have kept it. But that's a that's a nice title for the uh for the uh chapter. It's a pretty smart title. Yeah. I like it. I mean, it could be I wrong because book. there's there's some uh, uh weird things about this translation. Like it's never been translated officially. So the only like I read some a uh, like fan translation. Oh no. Like uh, some of well, if, some of his other if, books if it's have officially gotten translated. translated. If it's officially translated, then they'll definitely take out the line where he says, "I'm a man, I don't belong in the kitchen." <laughs> or as a man, I, I I will never step foot in the kitchen. I think that's in the book. I don't remember quite. Oh uh, yeah, you, you see, they've got to, you know, more. they've got to localize it so people can understand. And <laughs> but anyway, so yeah, <laughs> like what I like about these these series of episodes, like this series, is that like this part is that he's slowly going insane as well. Like basically. Yeah. The, mm-hmm. the isolation is getting to him, and basically all that shit is just being broken down, and he's like, you know, he's eating cake and shit, and he's talking about, like, Neko Ramen. By the way, we should also yeah, talk about Neko Ramen out, at some point, but, like, basically yeah, the isolation is getting to him. Like, yeah, so uh, the, he, that, the episode kind of starts out with him uh, basically going on about how he believes that the four-and-a-half to Tommy Wide uh, room is, like, the peak room you could ever have, because anything more is people trying to take over too much space or something like that. Um, yeah. And so, in the beginning of him getting trapped in the Tatami Galaxy, he's not curious whatsoever. He takes a peek into the other rooms and then decides, well, I'll just stay here. And for however many days it is, he stays there for a long time. And then he finally just starts to decide to start adventuring out. And as soon as he starts to starts adventuring out, that's when it is. That's at the first point when his sanity is starting to somewhat slip because he he wants a way to get out. He realizes that this isn't a way that he can really live, and he, he this isn't a way that he wants to live. So yeah, like, basically, he became a neat. Like, he became a neat. He's just like, oh, why should I bother? I'm just going to stay inside. And then it's like, well, you're going to stay inside for all of eternity. Yeah, like, he, he just accepts it when he, um, when he actually can go outside, but the moment he realizes, oh, fuck, I can't anymore. <laughs> That's like him. Um, when all hell goes down, it's yeah, like that's the, that is peak slave morality. Accurate, actually. Yeah, it's like this is like this is the I peak mean, of the slave morality that just... the main character embraces. Is that literally he refuses <laughs> oh. to take action, and now the galaxy makes him his bitch. Yeah, I also love when he starts talking about how great he's gonna make it, and then immediately after starts crying. <laughs> Yeah, he has. Like, he had all these ambitions, but like like every other ambition that he had, like having a, a rose colored school life, he can't make it come to fruition. Yeah. Yep, like, he's very much a, for lack of a better term, a, a pathetic character. He's not he's not very strong in his own story. Like he doesn't have to, he doesn't he doesn't yeah. take the ability, and he doesn't have much yeah, like like because um the interesting thing is is that he during the narrative like he's presented many opportunities, but he never takes it fully invited to him. Like because. Because he's really fucking passive. Like he he, think, he is never. I think Meek. Yeah, yeah I think Meek. Meek is a really good way to. 
yeah, Meek. Him. Yeah, yeah, Meek. Like, if you mm. notice, like, he's always, like, and this is why we say slave and master morality. Like, he he literally is a slave. Like, he never is proactive. Even when, like, even when he's trying to be proactive, he's literally just going off the flow. Like, he never takes any action. And that's that's shown in episode one as well yeah. in the character introductions. Whenever he's talking with Ozu, as soon as he sees um, uh, the girl that he's interested in, he, he sheepishly says, hey, Ozu, I don't think we should go through with this. And then Ozu says, like, two sentences back, and then he instantly, you know, stands up and starts declaring that they're going to... Uh, the main character, that is, instantly stands up and starts declaring that they're going to shoot the fireworks. He yeah. just kind of... Yeah, like, like happens, literally, he is, and, 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 like, and, and, and should we talk about how, like... Um... Should we talk about like the the t- the the sensei, the wise guy who's the love god, or should we talk about Ozu, the the true chat of the show? Oh, we'll end up talking about both. Which which one do you want to talk about first, Gundam? Uh, I want to do Wait. Ozu because honestly, he 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 literally is he literally is master morality. Yeah, he's like already mastered it. Yeah, literally, like he Wait. made the Tatami Galaxy his bitch. So Ozu is the main character's sort of quote unquote best friend, and main character's like, oh, I hate Ozu. He's a failure. He's a demon. He's a yada yada yada. Uh, however, um, like Transformers, there is more than meets the eye with Ozu. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I love that line. Yeah, that and so as funny. and as we go throughout the show, we we find out that Ozu has embraced uh, master morality and all of its benefits. So, um, do you guys want to? Um, do you want me to explain, or, or do you guys want to explain um, how he has turned the Tatami Galaxy into his bitch? I think you got it. So, <laughs> I I mean, I don't think there's too much to explain other than the fact that like he he he's fucking everywhere. And just does whatever he can that uh, like he wants to do. Yeah, Yeah, that's the weird thing is that literally every single scheme he's literally behind it. Like even the people who are scheming, he's behind that too. Like the guy has got like (laughs) like he the guy has got fingers in many many fucking pies. It's a British expression, but I think it's perfect. Like the guy is like dude, he's like Eisen with no hacks. He's like Naruto's black Zetsu, but well written. (laughs) Yeah. It's like all according to the Keikaku. <laughs> no, yeah, Keikaku he's great. means plan. So like the, <laughs> <laughs> the translators know Keikaku means plan. Uh, yeah, um, I only know a little bit of Japanese, but yes, uh, Keikaku, roughly translated and, and localized, deconstructed, reconstructed, blah, blah, blah. Um, translated to French back to English literally means plan. But yes, like. Um, <laughs> Because with like the, unlike our main character who is passive, Ozu takes action, yeah. and Ozu's the guy is like ever. everything that the main character isn't. Yeah, like like, like literally, o- Ozu is like the Giga Chad. Like he like if like he is the master morality Giga Chad. Like literally, you you, you f- like and the cool thing about Ozu is that you think he's on your side, but he isn't. He's on someone else's side, but then he's on on someone else's side. Like this guy is like double dipping, like times twenty. It's it's fucking insane. Ozu's Something on I like a lot. Side about the show like um like you know how osu has like a demon face and um <laughs> i want to find the line in the book it like um i'm paraphrasing right now but um like when when he meets osu and he's like um eight out of ten people would um would uh, mistake him for a yokai and the two fi- the two out of ten people would also be yokai <laughs> <laughs> I think uh, I think in the anime it says something like um, if you were to see his face in the dark, eight out of ten people would believe that he's a, a demon, and the other two could be convinced yeah. or something like that. It's a uh, it's really funny. Yeah. <laughs> well, well, I actually think that's it's really interesting great. about him because if you guys know anything about like Japanese mythology, so if anyone knows about like the the kitsune, um, they them they themselves are renowned as like tricksters and stuff like that. So that could also be um, like it could be that he's commenting on that that he's like a kitsune or one of those trickster spirits mm. that the Japanese have, or the trickster yokai. Because I think they have a yeah, few of them. Right. Yeah, to yeah, my knowledge, like... there's um, there's like a early morning cartoon or anime, I guess, that uh, my my younger brothers who are like seven and nine watch, and it's called Yokai Watch, and so it's got like a oh. bunch of different, just like harm, not exactly harmless, but like re- not very harmful spirits that do like small things, like make you make you yeah. really sad for the day, uh, cause there to be something that's always like poking you in your. Uh, in your clothes you know stuff like that and so yokai are basically just like these not very harmful to harmless spirits that do that play tricks on mm. people really and that, that that is kind of ozu now do you guys want to talk about where um all this grand um keikaku planning was going for ozu because i love the revelation um, oh yeah when... uh... <laughs> he has a girlfriend <laughs> And the and yeah, and, and the main character, despite all the timelines, never fucking knew. Like this is how yeah. good Ozu is. Like he he has a girlfriend, 
and he's trying to impress her. I think it's this this festival in Kyoto where they like light up these these yeah. symbols, and they want and he wants to see all three of them with, or four of them with her. And she she's literally the head of a pyramid scheme. <laughs> she's rich. <laughs> it's amazing <laughs> the pyramid scheme episode is so funny to me I oh you mean the fucking oh, yeah. cult episode that was great another another yeah. um example yeah. of the character's <laughs> slave morality he falls for a cult well i mean he didn't necessarily fall for it that much because like whenever they were doing the yeah. cult speech he was completely he was... disillusioned to them but i mean he still <laughs> he was like, the in only the, one in the first place though didn't fall for it actually yeah in the first like, place he though, escapes he still with did those get who... roped in yeah, like, he like, like here's the thing if you get roped into a cult in the first place it's still just as bad as drinking the cool light in my eyes but I like cool lady tastes good. <laughs> oh yeah. But anyway, um, yeah, that that fucking pyramid scheme episode was fucking great. Um, yeah. Yeah, but um, that, Ozu like is other... yeah, Ozu's fucking great. So should we talk about yeah. um the the love god or his teacher? Oh, um, uh, where's his one name? Other... Higuchi. Yeah, Higuchi. One, uh, one cultural thing I want to talk about real quick. Oh yeah, do that. Cult episode. Um, I know that South Korea has a huge problem with it, and I think a couple of other East Asian countries do, but, um, South Korea is completely infested with cults. Like, like, it is, it is no joke how many different cults there are. There is a literal crisis because so many people are roped into and spend so much of their money in in South Korea on cults. Um, so that episode probably Uh, hits home a lot more for a lot of people who live in that area. Oh, really? Um, I didn't, I I didn't didn't know about that. Um, maybe I should ask for about, like, one cult from south korea which like it was a cult that was dedicated to spreading COVID when it started what and because of that oh they, really? yeah they actually they actually really like had a huge impact on the COVID numbers wow like, i, didn't I don't remember that. how oh, accurate yeah. what I, i'm saying is because like it was just one of my friends who talked about it at one point but yeah that, that makes sense <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you know, I like I I, I have heard that Japan. I I do know a little bit about Japanese culture and a little bit about what's going on. Uh, not I don't have I'm not like an expert or anything. So don't quote me, but I do know that Japan has had quite a few cults. But um, South Korea, I didn't know it was that fucking bad. Um, wow. Yeah, South Korea mm-hmm. has like a, a large problem with it, to my knowledge. Um, I don't I don't know about North Korea because nobody knows anything about North Korea. It's, no. Uh, it's an yeah. iron wall. Yeah, uh, yeah. Um, so um, um, I'm going to say, if there's any Korean viewers in the chat, South Korean preferably, um, uh, can you try and confirm the validity of this? Like, I'm, re- I'm really interested now. Um, like, how do you f- say South Korea specifically? Like, oh, I'm North Korean. I, I can't comment on that. <laughs> <laughs> Unless they have a VPN. I'm North Korean, I can't watch this. <laughs> yeah. Unless they have a VPN. Well, actually, the funny thing is, if you wait, got wait, North Korean, North Korea, North Korea, wait, wait, North wait, guys, Korea. just to keep our North Korean audience. We have to say North Korea number one. North Korea number one. North Korea best Korea. Best Korea. North Korea number one. Yeah, no, but um, jokes aside, like actually, if you've got like a like an, a, um, a North Korean viewer base, it means that you're like literally being watched by the higher ups or the fucking government officials because they're the only one with oh. outside internet access. Interesting. Uh, Kim Jong Un number one. Super good time. <laughs> anyway China number one. <laughs> <laughs> right yeah anyways like um going on to we were gonna talk about higuchi right yeah i i fucking love higuchi i i don't his introduction in ev- like in episode one is fucking great when he like has that really long name <laughs> I, I don't remember yeah. if it's the case in the anime, but when he says his name again, he uh, says he says two different things. <laughs> yeah, 100% he does. It's so funny. Yeah, if I remember correctly, yeah. like, so Shinto gods and spirits do have, like, really long names. I have a screenshot from the book right here. Yeah, I'll, I'll show it on screen. Oh, God. Uh, any Jap- any funny, Japanese but... viewers, uh, please try and pronounce that five times in a row. <laughs> Kamo ta ketsu no mi... Mo Kamo oh, wait, that's, is that's the first one. Kamo and then Kami. Ni, mi, ni, mi no uh, Kami. That was a bit. Yeah, of, I know in awesome. I know in Japanese that Kami yeah, means God. Only yeah, because Kami. I've yeah, watched I, Dragon Ball. Yeah, like um, Kami. I think Kami translates to God or Spirit. Like um, I don't have my, I I have a little bit of knowledge on Shinto, but I do believe um, <coughs> in Shinto gods and like how we would view gods in like the Western tradition, but more like elevated spirits or something along those lines. Mm. But usually they would have like because if I remember clearly, so if you think of like um the um, Suki, I think it's also I think it's Suki something the the moon goddess or something. Like so we would know her as like Sukiyo or Suki whatever. But then they have like a full title. Actually, I'll look this up right now. Actually, so I got the wiki up. Uh, Shinto gods, because I do believe they have like a short name and then like a elongated name. 
Let's look that up as a cool going. Oh, yeah, depending upon how long the name is, they'll definitely have to have an abbreviated version. Yeah, list of Japanese deities. Oh, Jesus, those are long names. Okay, yeah, they do. So, for example, you've got, like, Amaterasu, <laughs> the god of the sun. Other names can be mm-hmm. Amaterasu Okimi, Amaterasu Okimi, Amaterasu Sumi, Ro Okikimi. Like, the names just go on and on. Like, holy shit. Yeah. There's a lot of cultural, like, like Japanese mythology mythological references into oh, okay galaxy. i was right her name is Tsukuyomi. okay so her full name is Tsukuyomi no mikoto hmm. yeah like that's a lot of yeah, cultural in the, in the references in into Tsukuyomi galaxy specifically yeah makes me wish i actually knew about that stuff <laughs> uh, i've got a few books i can uh i'll uh flick you them um flick you them after this episode is finished but yeah there's a lot of like cultural shit here but um, back to the love god mm. and his meeting at the the Neko Ramen. I think uh, yeah. I think he so like the, the beginning scene is um, it's it very much establishes uh, our protagonist and one of his one of his goals um, because uh, this character uh, Higuchi he basically says I'm a love god and uh, pretty soon we are going to be meeting at for lack of a, for just the sake of expediency the love god summit where we will decide uh which people are going to be paired together and he tells our main character that him and ozu are both in contention for getting together with uh akashi the uh, main love interest for our main character and so that instantly you know puts our protagonist off off kilter and so we know obviously that he's somewhat invested in her as well as it brings up um our protagonist's past and he says that uh, his previous life goes flashing before his eyes, and he uh, and that he wants to scream out from how awful it was. So it starts out with uh, us establishing that our main character's life before college even wasn't something that he would want to emulate or that he himself mm. likes. Yeah, yeah. And, and what I, mean, I find great... really interesting is that you you could actually be kind of convinced that Higuchi is actually a god because like watching the show. I thought I'm that like... For, like the first four yeah. episodes. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I love like... that he's like just. <laughs> <laughs> just this like whatever. fucking like, he's like this enlightened lazy, he's like this enla- guy who lives in the same place yeah he's like although a part of me is wondering like is he actually a god in mortal form and he's come to enlighten us plebs about how to live life correctly i mean with with the chin that that guy's got you know you kind of gotta wonder that's uh, i have some references from the book um that is not from the that is not from the anime originally he's literally described as having an eggplant like face in the book Oh god. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and, I love um, it. and um also in the book it's like mentioned pretty fucking clearly that um uh Osu working as a Higuchi servant accidentally <laughs> um accidentally uh flooded uh Higuchi's room which eventually ended up flowing down to uh what Watashi's room <laughs> which is like why like one of the reasons he fucking hates them <laughs> in the book. <laughs> <laughs> it's a detail I'd like to have in the show as well. Yeah. Because it's like a thing that keeps coming back and how like it ruined all of his books and uh, even his PC. Oh, really? Dang. Man, yeah, you, you l- listen, you can fuck with a man, but never fuck with his rig. Um, <laughs> His battle station. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> um, So what I like about Higuchi is that like, I-, I love the mentorship episode where he's just trying to teach the main character to chill and take life as it is. Like, because, yeah. like, the guy is very fucking enlightened. Like, um, I always view him as almost, like, a mix between, like, almost the perfect balance between master and slave morality. Like, he's not completely passive, but he isn't, like, active enough where he's doing major shit. Like, he just wants to chill and read his book. And then when the time goes, he goes on his journey to leave behind the mortal coils and go up to the celestial realm. Because he is... I don't to- remember I, I how think- long it takes him to read that book, but it's really fucking long. And it's funny how he, like actively like tries to avoid uh oh, yeah. giving it back <laughs> yeah isn't <laughs> it like, like a 200 page like it's expired yeah isn't it like a 200 or 300 <laughs> just page comes book back with tears in his eyes like i'm done <laughs> it was a good read it was it took me a while <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> several years i think um i think higuchi himself is involved in like probably one of my one of my three favorite scenes in the in the whole show Specifically, the uh, the song about uh, circles, triangles, and, and squares, and everything. Yeah. I really, really that loved great. that moment and how he was trying to give the the whole story, the whole lesson of the story, to the main character. 
and that he still didn't quite grasp it. Well, basically, yeah. he's telling the main characters that, dude, you're a square and you don't fit in a circle hole. No matter how much mm. you try, you just get, like, literally, because that's really what the main character's doing, is that, like, because another thing we should mention is that, like, even though the main character is talented in some aspects, he keeps putting himself in situations that's not, um, for his skill set, let's just say. Like, he puts himself in situations yeah. that, um, and, and I actually, Tanner, I think you would have a better explanation. It's like, um, he's like a, he's like a kung fu black belt trying to try, um, eat jitsu or something for the first time and failing. Like, would that mm. be a, somebody who's only ever somebody who's only ever done striking arts attempting to go into a grappling art yeah basically it's gonna it's gonna be really rough especially you're gonna have to dedicate a lot of time to get better at it yeah it's like yeah, yeah, yeah like um know. yeah actually um you as a martial artist would I actually know this question is it possible for someone to be skilled in two types of martial arts like if they uh, absolutely okay but um now i want to ask mm. a question like is that like how good do you have to be to be good at two things or three type styles at once like do you have to be like a prodigy or just train a lot like what's the um what's the level of I skill mean, you required? obviously have to have you have to have some level of talent but it really takes a large amount of like active dedication because some people are dedicated in the fact that they will say spend a lot of time on it but not necessarily a lot of brain power on it like a lot of people will show up and per se go through the motions um but if you if you're somebody who's willing to dedicate the time as well as a lot of like brain power and effort all the time that you're training, you can get good at two different martial arts. It takes a lot of practice, mm. and you have to really, really want it. And it's it is very, very difficult. Yes, and but as it, it and, 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 and the main character, like he never really actively wants it. Like he's he's more he more like wants the idea. But as as Tanner said, like you know he's a martial artist who's good at striking, trying to get into a grappling art. And he isn't really truly trying yeah. because the the thing about martial arts is that like it isn't about like doing the moves and stuff. You have to understand why the moves are like that. Like um, actually Tanner, actually to add to that point, like you practice um, is it Aijutsu or something? Uh, Aikido and Iaido. One of them being a sword art, the other one being a grappling. Uh, okay. Like a uh, talk about the sword art for example. Like um, I, I think this is a good example. Like talk about the sword art and like how how you would do um, a cut or a cut and how you do your moves. So what martial arts try to do is in general, they try to teach you a certain way of moving and being in your everyday life, basically a way that you should live your life. So for Iaido very specifically, everything tends to be uh, one of the one of the biggest points is precision as well as um, uh, solidness, as in making sure that you are heavy and rooted. You know exactly what you're going to do, where you're going to go, and that's exactly what you're going to do, which is also why it's all about precision. Yeah. So the way that you start out is, um, uh, so for the for the very beginning katas, you start out in seiza, which is the basic like Japanese sitting position with your legs tucked below your butt. Um, uh, from there, everything is about redirection and slowness, as well as making sure that you get every little detail right so that whenever the true moment comes you can take your because if you can't do a technique slow you can't do a technique fast it's harder to do a technique slow than it is to do it quick um and i've experienced that so many times but um the way that we do our techniques is all about precision and accuracy uh my sensei whenever he is critiquing my uh say like my first draw he'll tell me hey you're drawing a little bit too low your opponent's eyes should be a little bit higher are going to be a little bit higher than that um he'll tell me hey You've got like a few angles off on the place that your sword ends. You're pointing out, so, you're, so the uh, tip of your blade isn't actually pointing at your opponent after your first tr first cut. From there, you'd have to actually move it to stab at them if they do come in at you. So it's all of it's it's very much about like paying attention to the little details and fine tuning everything. Yeah, to and a um, massive degree. And I, and I think basically what you've explained here is it's not it's not enough to like do the motions. You have to understand the motions itself. Like you have to mm. understand mm -hmm. why you're doing it and 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 that is basically like hozu like um the 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 god guy like he understands why he's doing these things like he the, it is <laughs> he, he does these things and he also understands why he does these things and he's trying to impart this yeah. wisdom onto our characters it was a very roundabout way of getting back to the tommy galaxy but i'll accept it it was yeah <laughs> <laughs> um, also speaking of um well it's educational I don't know for the viewers this, as well um, like i think the viewers might enjoy this yeah. discussion about martial oh, yeah. arts oh yeah i think it's pretty interesting yeah also just so you know uh, sadly um higuchi is voiced by um Keiji Fujiwara, who passed away last year, sadly. Okay, um, but, um, he, was, he was also he was also Leorio in Honda Honda. Oh really? Yeah, I was gonna say I know yeah. that I know that he's been in a lot of stuff. The name's really recognizable yeah. to me. He's yeah. really good. Yeah. And okay. then like, Ranma one half mobile yeah. suit Gundam. Okay. okay. All right. Uh, a moment of silence. Right. Moment of silence. Okay. Silence over. Um. But yeah, yeah. I, I really like Gucci. I also like the fact that he just does not give a fuck about anything. 
Like he he'll wear his he'll wear his um kimono and shirt and wear his sandals. Like he just does things at his own pace. <laughs> his sandals so are good. baller as hell. His he's got he's oh, yeah, got, first off, he's they're so long. Second off, there's only one point on him. The balance his balance is amazing. He's always centered. He always mm. knows exactly what he's doing. It's great. It's it's very, Yeah, do you it's do you think uh, he's a practitioner character. of the art of the art of the blade? Uh, if he isn't, then he's just like a perfect human being because he is like yeah, he's a prodigy. He's, like no, you know what exactly he is? He's, he's he is, that old he man. No, he's that old man of the mountain that you that Tanner you have to go meet. That's in Japan, mm-hmm. black belt, and he's gonna teach you the reverse swallow strike of death or something. <laughs> Like he's the amazing. final I'll boss. Be taught all the, I'll be taught all this. Oh, he was in. He was Hugh. He was General Hughes in Full Metal Alchemist. Oh shit! Really? Holy moly! Yeah. I'm yeah. looking through his. He's Gilgamesh in. Or, what is that show? Or no, that's the that's the name of the show. He's yeah. been in like in tons general, of Tommy tons Galaxy of stuff. just has a great voice cast. Yeah. Uh before we before we cover that, should we talk about the? Oh no, we've already talked about the dentist trick. I think we basically just talked about all the characters and why we like them. Yeah. Um. So, uh, you want you guys want to talk about the the music? And the uh, sound and voice actors. It's absolutely amazing. <laughs> it's but, like... One yeah, of by the it. way, um, yeah. I don't want this ever being dubbed. Because I think they'll ruin it. Yeah, yeah. Guys, Honestly, can you imagine... I, I don't see any way you can improve it. Yeah, guys, could you Every imagine a Funimation version of this well anime? Represented. Like a Funimation dub of this? <laughs> I'm just imagining an ultimate shit show. Localizing it. Localizing it to a... Uh... The, the, the Tommy <laughs> Galaxy rap instead of its current intro. <laughs> Oh god! <laughs> Tommy, ta Tommy, go! Yes. Go, use a meme lord. <laughs> uh, to Tommy, actually, oh. Tommy Galaxy rap would be a really cool. Actually, we should make that. No I thanks. Really don't wanna. I, I would. would I would me. never want to ruin this great piece. Okay. Also, anyway. just really quickly before him, I, I should would. probably mention him. If you guys, if you guys have uh, any interest, um. Higuchi and the Hanuki are both in a, the follow-up book, kind of. Like, it's kind of a follow-up. Spiritual successor by the same uh, author. The Night is Short, Walk On, Girl. It also has a movie, but I, like, I highly recommend reading the book. Like, it's really fucking good. Yeah, I plan on reading the book for uh, Tom Galaxy as well. I, yeah, I, I, oh, yeah, I, I, I should get reading the book also, but, um... No, yeah, it's, I, it's I, I love short, the actually. Yeah. Um, I just want to say, oh, yeah. like, I what, love the I, sound. I, I, had a, I had a joke I wanted to make real quick. Okay, make the that joke. The only thing that I will do with the soundtrack is uh, I would 100% do a cover of the ending song because I love the ending song. The ending song is so yeah. good. Yeah, boy. I love it so much. Yeah. What I like about it's the sound. It's one of my favorite EVs. Yeah. yeah. Um, I just want to mention that what I really like about the soundtrack is how, like, like I like it how it, it strikes perfect balance where it's not, like, overwhelming the scenes that it's in. But like it also adds to the scenes it's in, like just yeah. very subtle details. Like it just helps you helps build up the atmosphere. Mm. It's one of those soundtracks that really blends in, um, but not in a bad way. As in, like it's not important. It blends in as in it's it's never out of place. It's always exactly where it should be. Yeah, I yeah. think that's a really great thing like about pretty much else. every pretty much every single the- theme for like each character fits them perfectly. Like um like for example, Osu's theme is probably the best. Uh, point of his like um his his mis- mischievous uh, personality is reflected perfectly in like his theme and pretty much every single character just perfectly reflected in their own theme that like plays usually when they're relevant yeah they, yeah, you you a, know at least a little bit about characters as soon as their theme plays it's really good stuff yeah, I actually do that's like That's one of the it. things that's always great about music in shows is when they yeah. somewhat uh, match up with characters or say, in, say that sometimes <laughs> like there's even, like a theme that plays wherever you go to a new place. Even Johnny has his own theme. Like <laughs> <laughs> The main for, character's for the, for the, penis for the has the main the chat, theme. Yeah, Johnny is the main character's libido, penis, whatever you want to call it. It is. And he, John yeah. is amazing. He's so, <laughs> he's great, with him are so he's, funny. He's so good. <laughs> <laughs> he's literally so imagine imagine woody and um Buzz Lightyear. bullseye and that is exactly no woody and bullseye is what um johnny and his horse are modeled after um so imagine woody and buzz lightyear as 2d characters firing guns and telling a character to go bang that girl <laughs> it's great it's so nice funny. <laughs> there's some great visuals with johnny like the way he's animated it is so unique it like is, i love that about it it never feels out of place because this fucking show animates literally everything however the fuck it wants to 
<laughs> it's amazing. Yeah, which is which is great. Yeah, like I said earlier, like this show is like the ultimate normie filter yeah. because it's not for normies. Yeah. They can literally do what the fuck they want, and that's why I like it. Yeah, like it fits the book perfectly as well. Like I read some in, I tried to like read a bit of some interviews uh, yesterday. I want to say, or like, wait, no, I think it was two days ago. But anyways, like, um, that was something that the author mentioned that the style. Like, he was really excited about the style, despite him never having seen anything from uh, Yuasa before that. Also, this is the first time uh, Yuasa ever made a uh, adaptation of a previously existing work. Oh, fun trivia. Yeah. Um, yeah. <laughs> we're, we're almost reaching to an hour. Is there from, anything else you guys want to talk about? From what I understand, at least. Yeah, yeah. so we're, we're almost reaching up to an hour. Um, is there anything else you find, Jim, and want to talk about before we sort of wrap this up? Mm, I don't know. I think you've uh, got a l- covered a lot of stuff, but... um. I do want to ask each of you because I already said that like one of my highlight scenes was the um the uh the song that Higuchi sings. What's like a highlight scene for both of you? Like, oh one of your god, favorite, just, like, um, small moments. I like, think I like the uh I like the drinking scene between a uh, Yogasaki and Watashi a lot. <laughs> oh, you motherfucker! I like that scene too. Um, right, I'll pick a different one. Uh, I'll I'll pick the one where he goes like for the the I'll, I'll pick the uh the MGTOW scene because that was like especially funny yeah yeah there's a lot of really good scenes in like every single episode which is partially why i love it so much yeah it has such a great pace like it's never boring yeah, even just like that's the that's way that is, that is really interesting thing about the show is that it's 11 episodes and yet it doesn't actually feel too long or too short like everything it just feels so right yeah like yeah because as they as they go along from the, the like book, parts because of the... the book in general is like has slower pacing but like still they it's surprising how much they get in there yeah, oh yeah and also. even even like later on as parts are like repeated they speed them up somewhat and like as mm-hmm. jokes uh watashi like comments on at one time such as like yeah. man this old lady scene's getting really expedient <laughs> something like that <laughs> when she comes like racing by on her fucking thing <laughs> and then she just, just yeah, there's, there's like, a lot of um, visual humor in the money. show <laughs> And then that's after she like puts it in there, she literally me. she literally like hits his ass as she goes away. It's so funny. I'm just, like driving by as he's about to, <laughs> like when he's with a uh, cowley, and she like she like just tells him two sentences, takes his money, and then drives away. <laughs> it's like se- isn't it like seven hundred dollars or something like that? If I if I remember correctly, oh, like seven thousand yen. So uh, uh, so a thousand yen is the equivalent of like US ten bucks. <laughs> oh, okay, so seventy bucks. Yeah, <laughs> it's so good. Like yeah, like basically how I figure out the equivalent is like a hundred, like a hundred yen is like um the equivalent to a US dollar. Like hmm. like I'm not, I don't know what the exchange rate is, but basically think of it as the equivalent of like our version of like a dollar or like a one euro. Yeah, for, in, I got you. for for I mean, meme. Yeah, I'm posting some links right here, but um, uh, this was a pretty good interview that I read. I'd recommend you link it when uh when this goes up. But like uh, you asked, uh, this was something I wanted. Like I wanted to mention earlier, but forgot. Um, the fast talking or like the fast narration from the main character was actually like um, it was never intended that you should get everything on the first go, but like it was just meant as like a way of saying he he's thinking of a lot of things constantly oh, because yeah. he's like he's in constantly in his mind. head. Yeah, yeah. I, that's that's pointed out a lot. You know, which episode like, is it? I think it's I think it's one of the I think it's like episode three or four. But he he points out that he, he points out himself that he really overthinks things like to a massive degree. Yeah. Oh yeah, I remember that. Like, scene. Yeah, I don't like, remember where it was. Yeah, that to go back. the director himself just saying like um uh yeah the the reason. And the reason is because um, we just wanted to reflect how much he thinks through everything. Well, it, which actually makes sense because, and, like, and in your own mind, it's definitely going to need a second or third watch. Yeah. Yeah, like you said, it's the rewatch value. Uh, anything else? Mm-hmm. I think that's really it. All right. Yeah, like, yeah, like okay, so um, oh, so just uh, ending thoughts of the Tommy Galaxy. Um, it's great, guys. You should watch it. Um, a lot of good themes, and, and you actually and may learn, and you may actually uh, learn some things. So, uh, what's you guys' final thoughts on Tatami? Final thoughts on Tatami Galaxy? It's, I mean, I've, I, it was my favorite anime when I watched it, and it still is. <laughs> like, I, I think, after I having seen really it like sources. five times, I've, I've never gotten tired of it. It's, it's really I funny. As I watch really, it more. like, just on, really on. exciting, and it gets really emotional towards the end. Like the, the final scene of him yelling towards Osu, it's fucking great oh yeah when he's like fucking naked and he's running that shit's amazing <laughs> yeah <laughs> yeah, yeah. Like, and Ozu's like finally... nanny 
<laughs> I like I like a lot of things about the ending, but the one yeah. thing that I don't like is that neither Osu or Akashi know who he is in that timeline. No, mm-hmm. which kind of makes everything uh, no, change no, that, a bit. It was just because like he had the oh fuck I think it was just because they hadn't seen him in a bit. I'm not entirely sure. Wait, yeah, I think you're, well, I, mean, I think because right. whenever whenever he actually sees them, he doesn't have the beard. Oh, oh, so yeah. Like, there's no true. reason that they shouldn't yeah. be able to. There's no reason they shouldn't be able to yeah. recognize him instantly. I mean, but you're they probably don't right. Recognize him. It also makes sense Which, because um, then, like he was locked away. <laughs> yeah, and I know that it makes sense and everything, but it takes away a lot of the um a lot of mm. the emotional punch of them understanding uh, who he I'm... is and him changing in front of them. Instead, they now know uh, him I... as the changed person. Mm. I, if, yeah, for I mean, me personally, like... I would have liked it the other way, but I mean, I don't think it's yeah. badly written the way That's it is. Enough. I don't, I don't um like I, I don't see anything wrong with that. Although I think it's it works really well, like that mm-hmm. he's. They, they've like in that world only known him as this changed person. They they only know him as the man who's embraced master morality. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> the ending when he gets like Osu's face is also great. When they like flip dialogue <laughs> from earlier. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that that is that is one of the things that's there. There are so many just like as as George Lucas would say, it's like poetry it rhymes. But there there are so <laughs> many just like callbacks uh, to previous scenes and dialogue and everything. It's amazing and mm. call and like foreshadowing or call yeah. forwards for lack of a better term. Because in some cases, it's not it's not foreshadowing because um, mm. there's no way you could guess what would happen in the future based on what happens in the past. Yeah, but it's oh. it's it's really really good. I I really really like it a lot. Yeah, um, it's uh, top gets... ten, may very well be my top five. Yeah, uh, yeah Katana it's... Galaxy. It's um, I gave it like an out of eight out of ten, so I highly recommend it. <laughs> For me, it's a ten. In case you could not tell, <laughs> I'd probably call it, it a nine. But the character was seen well, look, times, look, the only know? true nine is Legend of the Galactic Heroes. <laughs> <laughs> What are you talking about? That's yeah, a ten. Really, no. Yeah, I think I gave well, that well, a ten. Well, actually, you you see how you score anime. Is like if it's retro, you add um, you add um, an extra six on the base score. So, say for example, I gave a show written in the nineties a five. Well, now I add like a, a five to it and it becomes like a ten out of ten or an eleven out of ten. So this when is, does yes. Tommy Galaxy get that plus six bonus? Uh, I'll give How it like maybe another twenty to ten years, I'd say. <laughs> so, so basically, <laughs> I have to go back again and I have to like rate it again. I'm gonna have to give it like a, a plus six again. <laughs> It's gonna get Great. a thir- it's gonna get like a thirteen out of ten. <laughs> <laughs> the only score that it truly deserves. <laughs> <laughs> All right, um, this is Bio Gundam. Um, thanks for watching, and uh, Meme Lol Tanner, say goodbye. It's been fun. Goodbye, See you guys. Yeah, um, we might have these guys back again for another video, maybe together or by themselves. Uh, who knows what the future will be? But uh, hope everyone enjoyed uh, my new guests, and uh, hopefully we'll see them around. This is Bio Gundam signing off.